Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities is finally out on Netflix and has put audiences on the edge of their seats, each episode bringing about a whole new story full of horrors. The first episode, Lot 36, features some big names and a lot of spooks. Let's look at what the first two episodes have in store, along with the characters and cast. Starting with more on Lot 36, Netflix's new horror show, Cabinet of Curiosities, made with Guillermo del Toro, just came out with its first episode. Lot 36 comes with a cast full of some big names and a fascinating set of characters. It's an eight-episode anthology series with contributions from a vast range of writers, creators, and directors. Each episode is a standalone, self-contained horror story with very different cast members. Lot 36 follows the story of a character called Nick Appleton, who buys a unit belonging to a deceased old man and finds some extraordinary items. After the character takes an old seance table and some obscure books to an antique specialist, he starts uncovering a horrifying secret about the old unit. Its ending does make us question whether the character needed to go back into the lot if he could only control his greed. But then again, as he's being beaten up with a hammer by the mobster, $10,000 wouldn't have been enough to cover for it or to keep him alive. Moreover, Tim Blake Nelson and Sebastian Roche. Tim Blake Nelson plays Nick Appleton. The episode's protagonist is a war veteran who's extraordinarily aggressive and cynical. The character is also very racist, as we've seen how he treated a Amelia, a Hispanic woman. Some of the actor's most famous roles came as Wade Tillman or Looking Glass in The Watchmen Show, a significant role in The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, Samuel Stearns, who's the leader in The Incredible Hulk by Marvel, and Ralph Myers in Just Mercy. Another central character from the episode is Roland, played by Sebastian Roche, an antique specialist fascinated by the occult. As Nick shows him the books he took from the unit, the character offers to give him $300,000 for the fourth, and even offers to help him find it. Roland acts as a spiritual alternative to the cynical Nick, with his fascination towards the occult contrasting perfectly with Nick's Christianity. Rosh has previously starred in shows such as Criminal Minds and The Man in the High Castle. Furthermore, we've got Elpidia Carrillo and Demetrius Gross. While her character's full name isn't shown in the credits for Cabinet of Curiosity's Lot 36 episode, she introduces herself as Amelia, who Elpidia Carrillo plays. As she approaches Nick, who bought off her family's unit after she was evicted for wrongful reasons, she asks to search the lot for any items that her family might have left. The character is then rejected aggressively and even put through racial abuse. For most of the episode, the character plays a pretty subdued role, but her interaction with Nick has severe consequences for how the story ends. Carrillo has previously starred in films such as Predator, as Anna, Nine Lives, and Kingpin. Furthermore, we've got Eddie, who Demetrius Gross plays. The character owns the warehouse in which Lot 30 is and where Nick does most of his business. While his arrangement with Nick is ominously unspecified, he's still much more empathetic than him. We see it firsthand as he seems genuinely sorry as he realizes his wrongful eviction of Amelia and bashes Nick for treating her so harshly. Before Gross' start in the show, he famously appeared in Straight Outta Compton and Justified, while he's currently portraying Josiah LaRue in Fear the Walking Dead. Lastly, Lot 36 supporting casts and characters. The old man who's the owner of Lot 36 and whose death starts the narrative in the first place is played by James Neely. The actor has starred in Tapped Out. Moreover, Agatha is played by Martha Burns. The character is an antique specialist that Nick first goes to, but then she refers him to Roland. Burns has previously worked on Remedy, Slings and Arrows, and Savagery. Then we've got the auctioneer, who Tony Munch plays. This character oversees the sale of the storage lot in Lot 36. Some of the actor's famous works include movies such as Cube Zero, Shoot 'em Up, and The Boondock Saints 2, All Saints Day, Cabinet of Curiosities, Graveyard Rats, Cast and Character Guide. Coming up, more about the episode. The second episode from Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities, Graveyard Rats, comes out with a small yet highly talented cast who make the episode stand out. The anthology series is made by del Toro and has eight episodes, each with its own short horror story. The episode came out on the 25th of October this year, along with the show's first episode, Lot 36. Unlike Netflix's other critically acclaimed shows, Cabinet of Curiosities puts out two new episodes daily. Its story is based on the same book by Henry Kuttner. Graveyard Rats takes place in Salem, Massachusetts, and is set in the 1920s. Its plot follows the story of a cemetery caretaker and grave robber called Mason. In the episode, the character tries to steal some valuables from a wealthy merchant who comes into the morgue where Dooley, his friend, works. Moreover, the show has a lot of other famous names 
games, playing main and supporting roles. Additionally, the main cast. The protagonist in the Graveyard Rats episode from Del Toro's show, Mason, is played by David Hewlett. The cemetery's caretaker, Mason, needs to find some more coffins he can loot, but his biggest fear isn't that he's going to be put off by the other grave robbers, but instead the rats that infest his cemetery. Besides starring in Cabinet of Curiosity's second episode, the actor has previously worked in Departure as Bill Ratch, Anthony Herman in the CBS show Clarice, and another of Del Toro's horror movies, The Shape of Water. Moreover, some of his recent work includes the Jason Momoa-led dystopian TV show C, created by Stephen Knight. Julian Richings plays Dooley. The character plays the role of a medical examiner trying to keep the coroner's newest wealthy patient a secret from his friend Mason. Well, the second episode mostly follows Mason around most of the time, Dooley is established as necessary early on in the story, primarily since the two have worked together and know each other well. The actor is known for playing in Man of Steel as Lore M, while appearing in Doom Patrol and American Gods. He also famously appeared in the cast of The Umbrella Academy Season 3 as Chet Roto. Moving on to supporting cast and characters. Moreover, Ish Morris plays Harry, another grave robber, in the episode. The actor's remarkable movie career showed up in CW's Batwoman. Some of his recent work includes shows such as Good Witch. Let's take a look at Burton, played by Alexander Elling, another grave robber that's scared off by Mason at the start while he's on a mission with Harry. In Another Life, Elling played Javier Elmanzar and appeared in Netflix's Tiny Pretty Things, along with a cameo in Shadowhunters' The Mortal Instruments. Nabil El Khafif plays Hans Overfist, the bruiser to whom Mason brings loot over. The actor famously portrayed Hank in American Gods and even appeared in X-Men Apocalypse, though as a minor character. Recently though, he played Alfred in Blood and Water. The widow of the wealthy merchant on whom Mason has his sights, played by Bridget Robinson. The actor has also appeared in another one of Del Toro's films, Crimson Peak. More recently, she came on as Mrs. Harrison in The Luckiest Girl Alive. Last, we got Corey Bertrand playing as the widow's and wealthy merchant's son. The actor had starred in Murdoch Mysteries, a Canadian drama. He recently also created and starred in Roommate Roulette on YouTube. Finally, what makes the episode stand out? The show manages to bring around a new monster with our jaws reaching for the ground for each of its eight episodes, but Graveyard Rats still stands out since it was an absolute banger right at the show's start. Not just that, but it also turns one of the most common animals found into something horrifying. Surprisingly, most of what we see are just physical models throughout the episode, with barely any real-life rats being used. Mason eventually gives up and accepts his fate, which all of us have known since the episode starts, as goes down into the underground hellscape. But that doesn't make it any less jarring when it happens. The character thinks he finally sees the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's just a tiny hole that rats have chewed into one of the tombs, and his escape has been ruined only because of his arrogance. The tombs belong to the dead and the rats, and anyone else that dares to climb into them suffers a horrible fate. The episode's director, Natalie, says they never used more than three rats together. If anything, the animals were only there as references. The shots where real-life rats can be found are mainly just environmental. Well, they're just hanging out. But all the scenes where rats run over a person or a carpet are made possible by special effects. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think of the first two episodes? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.